Hey everyone, ever tried to get the perfect line in Procreate, but your brush just feels wrong? Too heavy when you want something delicate? Or so stubborn that it feels like you're pushing through concrete? If you know the problem, you may also know that there's a solution. The pressure curve. In this video, I'm going to tell you about a big change in the new Procreate 5.4 update and show you with practical examples how to master your Apple Pencil so you can make it feel perfect for you for every single brush. In case you've never used a pressure curve before, let me show you. Take this pencil brush for example. It feels a bit too hard for me. If I press lightly, barely anything shows. But now, watch this. I adjust the curve and draw with the same light pressure. And boom, my light touches are actually light, and I don't have to push hard for bold, dark lines. It just feels natural. So, what's the deal? Until now, Procreate had one main pressure curve in the global settings. You can find it under Actions, Preferences, Pressure, and Smoothing. And if you changed the pressure settings, that change applied to every single brush in your library. Let's say you made your pencil brush super sensitive for sketching, like I've just done, and suddenly your calligraphy brushes are all messed up. But not anymore. With the new Procreate 5.4 update, we finally have a dedicated pressure curve option directly within each brush's settings. To find it, simply go into your brush library, tap on a brush to open its brush studio, then navigate down to the Apple Pencil tab, and there it is, a brand new pressure graph just for this specific brush. The great thing is that you can see all these modifications live in the right panel so you can immediately see the effect on the go. This isn't just a small tweak, it's a fantastic improvement. This means you can fine-tune how every single brush responds to your Apple Pencil and make it feel just right for the way you draw. By the way, the old global pressure curve in Procreate's preferences is still around too. Stick with me until the end and I'll show you how to tell them apart so you won't get confused. Okay, but some of you may be wondering, what exactly is the pressure curve? How do you read it, and how do you know what to change? If you've ever looked at that little graph and felt totally lost, this video is for you. Let's break it down. It's actually very simple. First, let's talk about the effect the brush has on your canvas, things like how thick or opaque your line is, and many other features. They all may depend on how much pressure you apply. Now look at the graph. The horizontal line, or the x-axis, represents the pressure you apply with your Apple Pencil. The far left is zero pressure, just the tip touching the screen. The far right is maximum pressure, when you're pressing as hard as you can. The vertical line, or y-axis, represents the output of the brush. Output means the result you see on the canvas. The bottom is minimum output, like the thinnest line you can get, and the top is maximum output, such as the maximum thickness possible. The default pressure curve is a simple, straight line. This means the pressure you apply and the effect you get are a direct match. Press a little you get a little. Press a lot, you get a lot. But the normal Apple Pencil's sensitivity is very broad. To get the full range of a brush's effect, for example, from the thinnest to the thickest line, you have to use the full pressure range, from super light to really hard, which can feel unnatural or straining. That's why being able to adjust the pressure curve can be so useful. Customizing the curve is easy. You can simply drag any of the two initial points at the beginning and end of the line. You can also bend the curve by dragging the line itself. To get more precise control, just tap anywhere on the curve to add a new point. 
Each point can be dragged to fine-tune the curve. To remove a point, simply tap on it and hit the Delete option. If you want to start over, tap any point and then hit the Reset button. So, how do you use this in practice? Let's go through a few examples. First, let's fine-tune that same pencil brush I used before, and check how to make it more sensitive to light pressure. Here, the more pressure you apply, the darker the line gets. If you have a light touch, and never press that hard to get to the maximum, the easiest and quickest fix is just to move the top right point to the left. Making the curve steeper at the start will make your brush more responsive to the lighter touch and will give you a big effect with very little pressure. Look, with the default setting, if you press with half of the maximum pressure, your line will be in the middle of its possible output. But if you move that upper point like this, now at half pressure you already get the maximum output, and to get the medium effect, now you also need to press much lighter than you did before. This way, you can narrow the range of pressure to your own preference. Just remember that if you press harder than your newly set maximum, the brush will no longer respond to more pressure. So if you want to make the brush to feel lighter, but without sacrificing the whole pressure range, try this instead. Bend the whole curve up. But we can do one more thing. At minimum pressure, this brush is practically invisible. So what I'm going to do is drag the left point just a little bit up. Now with that same light pressure, I get a stronger output. And even with a very light pressure, I can already see a mark. On the other hand, if you tend to press hard when you draw, or perhaps you just want to get a more delicate output with your normal pressure, you'll want a curve that's flatter at the beginning. This means you have to apply more pressure just to get the brush to respond, giving you greater control over those light strokes. The flatter curve helps prevent you from accidentally making a heavy mark when you're only trying to create a light one. Now let's try this fun lettering brush from my Fluffy collection. It has a few pressure-sensitive features, like line thickness and color, so we can easily follow along and see the effect. By the way, if you like this brush, you can download it for free and play with its pressure settings yourself. Check the link in the description. Watch the line as I make the curve steeper. See how the line becomes thicker? It's because the pressure I used now gives a bigger output. If I bend the curve down and make it more resistant to lighter touches, just watch how the line gets thinner in those parts where I used less pressure. And here is another setting, an S-shaped curve. With this setup, the middle part of your pressure range gets steeper. In practice, this means your brush responds more dramatically in that middle zone, giving you quick transitions from thin to thick and back again. It's especially nice for calligraphy, where you want that graceful motion to feel natural. You can also try a reversed S-curve. This time, the middle flattens out, while the beginning and end get steeper. That gives you more stability in the middle, and can be useful, for example, if you want a consistent, uniform line for the main part of the stroke, but still need subtle control for a beginning or end. And now watch this. If we move the bottom left point to the right, the line will stay monoline with light and medium pressure, and then suddenly bloom when you press harder. So here is a short summary. Make the curve steeper if you normally press the Apple Pencil lightly. Bend the curve down if you normally press hard, or if you simply want your strokes to be more delicate overall. Bend the curve into an S-shape if you want to quickly switch between light and hard effects or play with the curve to get a unique effect. In the end, there's no right or wrong here. <laughs> Just pick a brush you use a lot and experiment. See what happens. And that's it for this new pressure curve option in Procreate 5.4.
you now have full control to adjust each brush exactly how you like. But as I mentioned at the beginning, the global pressure curve in the preferences menu is still there too. It works the same way as individual curves, but once you modify it, the changes apply to all your brushes at once. Think of it in two steps. First, your global pressure curve sets the initial pressure sensitivity for the whole app. It works as a master control that establishes a new baseline for how your Apple Pencil feels. This is handy if you want to adjust your entire brush library at once, for example, to make all your brushes more suitable for a lighter touch. Then, the brush specific curve found in the Brush Studio adds its own setting on top of that baseline. It allows you to fine tune how that particular brush responds to the pressure you've already set in the global setting without affecting any of your other brushes. Just be careful if you modify the global curve. If some brushes in your library already have custom settings, you may accidentally change those brushes in unpredictable ways. But don't worry, you can reset the global curve anytime. Just hit the button below the graph. You won't lose your individual brush settings. It will reset only the global curve. I hope this gave you a better picture of the pressure curve. As a brush creator myself, I think this feature is a fantastic new way for customizing Procreate Library, and I can't wait to start updating my pressure-sensitive brushes to make them even more optimized. Oh, and if you liked the fluffy brush I used today, feel free to grab it. It's a free download. I also have lots of other unique brushes, so feel free to check out my full collection. All the links are down below in the description. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching.